Hi everyone, it's Jeff here from Avada. In this video, I will take a look at how to use the Avada social sharing element. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon to be notified of all new content. OK, let's begin. The social sharing element allows you to add a customized social sharing box anywhere in your content, but typically in a post content layout section through Avada layouts. This element is both separate to and connected with the social sharing box that can be added to the bottom of blog and portfolio posts via the global options. That can be turned on or off in the global options for either posts or portfolios, and the options are configurable in much the same way as the element through the social sharing tab. These global options then feed into the social sharing element as the default values. But the actual global options social sharing box, even if it is turned on, is only used when not using Avada layouts. And if you're not using Avada layouts, you're missing out. OK, so that's where the element comes in. You can use it on standard page content. You might want to have it on a particular page of your website. But typically, you would add it to a post or portfolio content layout. Let's have a look at that. Here's a post on the Avada Business Coach pre-built, and these posts are using Avada layouts. There's no social sharing element here, so let's add one. I will open the Article Content Layout section as that's where I want to place the element. I'll just control click to open that in a new tab. OK, so I think I'll just add the element directly under the Content element here. We're in a Layout section, so the element's open to the Layout Elements tab, but I'll just move to the Design Elements as the Social Sharing element is there. OK, I'll just add that. There are three tabs with the Social Sharing element, General Design and Extras. Let's start with the General tab. The first option is called Social Sharing. These are the social sharing networks to be displayed on the sharing box, as we can see here. You can leave this blank to inherit the networks set in the global options, or you can selectively add what networks you want to show. If I go to the description, I can click on any of the defaults here to be taken to that part of the social sharing global options, and I would just customize my global defaults here. I'm happy with these networks, so this way I can just leave the option on the element at default. Layout is the next option. This element has a stacked or floated option. Choosing stacked just makes each part full width and on top of each other, and this would work well for smaller columns, but I think I will leave this on floated. There's also an option to show or hide the tagline, as well as setting the heading size and the tagline itself. For this example, I will leave this on H4 and call it Share This Article With Your Online Network. OK, the next three options are about what gets shared. The first of these is called Sharing Title, and as the description explains, this is the post title of what will be shared. You can leave it empty to use the current title of the post, or you can customize it here. Just note that some of the social networks will ignore this option and will instead auto-pull the post title based on the shared link. Then comes the Sharing Link. Again, you can leave it empty to share the URL of the current post, which would be the most common option, or you could add any link in here. Maybe you want to always share your home page, or perhaps you want to share a specific URL or video on certain pages. Finally, there is a sharing description. You can add a specific description here that will be shared. Leave empty to use the excerpt of the current post. But again, just note that some networks don't offer description, and so might ignore it, while others will instead auto-pull the post excerpt based on the shared link. Also, note the database icons here which denote that all three of these options allow you to use dynamic content. This might come in handy when using the element in layouts, or even if you're just feeling a bit advanced. The next option down is for the positioning of the social icon tooltips, which can be top, right, bottom, left, or none. The default here is top, and I think that's just fine. Under this is an option to add a specific image for sharing to Pinterest. On a layout, this would be dynamic content, such as the featured image. The last few options on this tab are the Element Visibility option, which allow you to show or hide this element on various screen sizes, and the CSS class and CSS ID option for further customization with custom CSS. OK, let's now move to the Design tab, where I can tweak the design. At the very top is a Margin option, which we can use to tweak the positioning of our element on the page. In this case, I think the hard-coded top margin is a bit big, so I'll bring that down to 30 pixels. There's also a padding option if we want to give our sharing box content a bit more breathing room. Background color is next, and here I might change this to color 5, and add some transparency to lighten that up. 
There's an option for border size below this, and another one for border color, so that you can have full independent control over the border. In this case, I don't think I want a border, and so I'll also leave the border size and color alone. There's also a border radius option, and perhaps I might add a small radius to this, like five pixels all the way around. Okay, under this is a full typography set. Currently it's set to default, so it's using the default H4 typography from the global options. But here you could change any or all of the typography by applying a global typography set, or just changing a specific option. I think it's fine as is. I'll also leave the tagline color at its default of color 7. Under this are two alignment options for the tagline and the social icons. These can be used in conjunction with the stacked option for some interesting layouts, but here I think I will stick with the default of tagline to the left and icons to the right. There's also responsive option set icons here, so you can adjust alignment independently for different screen sizes. Following this is a whole range of options to control the icons. The first of these is for boxed social icons. It's on default here, and that's set to yes. But if I wanted to change the color of that, I could just go to the global defaults and change it there. I'm good with this blue. Then there are options for the box radius and the icon size. Both of these are pulling from the global defaults, and I think they look fine. With the next options, social icons color type, I can use custom colors as is being used now, or I can change to brand colors. I'm not a fan of the brand colors here, so I'll go back to custom. With that option enabled, I get both a social icon custom colors and a social icon box colors option. So here, I can add a single hexadecimal color for the icon or box colors, like this, or even an individual color for each icon or box, separated by the vertical line symbol, like this. But I will delete these, as I'm happy with the global defaults of color 1 and color 5. Social icon box padding comes next, and this could be used a bit like alignment. So for example, I might spread these out a bit by adding 5 pixels to the right and left of each box. Then comes an option called Social Icon Custom Taglines. With this if you want, you can even add a tagline next to the icon. So if I add something for the first two, you can see what it would look like. Obviously your choices here would affect your layout a fair bit. If you do use icon taglines, you can also adjust the font size and the tagline color with the next two options. Icon taglines don't suit my example however, so I'll remove those. The final option is for a social icon separator border size. If I set this to 2, the separators appear, and another option for their color appears at the bottom. If I wasn't using boxed icons, I think this option would look great, but here I'll just leave the border size at 0. Ok, the Extras tab has the usual element animation options, and again, in this case I think I'll leave them off. Ok, let's save this work, and come back to our post, and refresh. And there's our social sharing box which will be on all posts. That looks pretty good, and might even get you a few extra shares. You could of course add this element to any layout section, or even on an individual page. If we take a look at a product on the Avada Winery pre-built website, we can see the element has been placed below the product, with only a few specific sharing options selected. In this case, the element has been added to the product content layout section. So that's the social sharing element. It gives you enormous flexibility with styling and configuration to create a social sharing box that will hopefully get you lots of social shares. Ok, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos, and if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.